Welcome back everyone, it's Mitch here and today I'm going to be covering what is in my camera bag. So without further ado, let's get right into it. If you see anything you like today, I will make sure to have all of the links to all of the products down in the description below. Uh, there you can get them all on Amazon and I will note that these are my Amazon affiliate links. What this means is that when you buy something, you don't pay anything extra for it but Amazon gives me a tiny little cut for directing you over their way. Anyway, first most fundamental piece of kit is my camera bag. This is the Lower Pro Flipside 400 AW2. That's a, just rolls off the tongue. Um, but yeah, so this is just a standard camera bag basically. It opens from the back and you can use Velcro straps inside to rearrange it however you want. It has just enough room for my camera, a lens or two, my drone and a gimbal. There's also a lot of small little compartments on the outside. It's got a rain cover and a bunch of other things that I would definitely recommend. It does a great job. But first, we've got arguably the main event, my Sony a6300. This is the main camera that I shoot on day to day all over the place. It does 4K at 30 frames per second, uh, which is super sharp, super nice or you can go down to 1080p for 100 frames per second, which gives you that nice slow motion. Uh, on top of that, you've also got the screen here, which flips out a bit. It doesn't rotate to the side, unfortunately, but that's not the most important thing to me. In terms of the actual user interface on the back, you've got Sony standard. There's a lot of customizable buttons along with on the top. Uh, so yeah, you can basically program this camera to have buttons do whatever you want. It's really easy to tailor to yourself. Uh, the menu system itself inside the camera can be a bit confusing and hard to get used to. Once you do, it's quite easy to get around, but there is certainly a steep learning curve. Okay, on to lenses. This is the Sigma 30mm 1.4. 30mm is really good for street photography. It's not too wide, but not too tight at the same time. And it's f1.4. So what that's good for is basically, if you're out and about and it's getting dark, you can lower your aperture, which means you can keep the image quite clean at nighttime. Whereas if you raise your ISO, the image starts to get a bit grainy and it can look quite bad quite quickly. The other good thing is that this gives you the super nice blurry background called bokeh. So at 1.4, it gets super nice and clean in the background. Next lens I use is actually the first one I got for my Sony camera. This is the Carl Zeiss 16 to 70 f4. So you can go really wide like this, or you can punch into 70 mil. Obviously it isn't super long, but it's definitely long enough for most things you're going to do. Yeah, I've managed to get through the past two years of using this camera and get quite a lot of shots with only two lenses, so I think that's pretty great. In terms of accessories for my Sony camera, I have a bunch of spare batteries. The downside to having a small camera is it's got small batteries, uh, which don't last as long. The other thing is I have these red dangly thingies on here, which everyone always asks about. Basically, they're for this. This is the Peak Design Quick Release Camera Strap. These little dots click into thing here. Do that on both sides and you've got your camera strap. So it's easy to take on and off. I also think that it's honestly more secure with this quick release camera strap than it is with your standard Canon or Sony strap. I've had instances before where my camera has slipped out and this has fallen off. Yeah, if that falls and hits the ground, it's a very easy way to break your camera quite quickly. These accessories aren't for Sony, but they are still quite useful. This is a battery pack. This basically just goes in the bottom of your camera. So it look like this. Uh, it adds a bit of size to it, but basically in here you can put two batteries. So that lasts a bit longer. You can also use a shot button here. So that's good if you're taking portraits, something vertical. Then if you're shooting video, the other accessory I would really recommend is this. It is a intervalometer by JYC. Basically what this does is you plug it into the side of your camera and you tell it to take a photo every X amount of seconds. This can be really good if you're shooting time lapses. So for instance, when we were in Hawaii last year, uh, I wanted to shoot a sunrise time lapse of Diamond Head, but I did not want to get up at 4 a.m. to get that going. I just set this up on a timer to go off at 5 a.m. and then after that, it would take a photo every five or six seconds for a few hours. Uh, I woke up, went and checked my camera, and yeah, you've got the whole time lapse there. This does it all for you. Um, it's certainly a lot better than sitting around and pressing the shutter button yourself, which I've done before every five seconds for a few hours. I would not recommend that. Drones. This is the drone that I've been using for the past two years, I believe. It's the DJI Mavic Pro Platinum Edition. Uh, so this is the first one that they released. Yeah, you can have it like it's a normal drone like that. Good to fly. It takes two seconds uh, and then you can fold it back up again. Just easy as that and it's a lot more portable. With the drone, I of course have the controller. This is from DJI. Again, it just folds out. The Mavic series is sort of made for portability, 
but it's still really good quality. So yeah, this just connects to my phone and there's an app on there and I can control the drone through that. And in addition to that for the drone, I always carry two spare batteries. These give you about 25, 28 minutes of battery each. In total, I've got three with me at any one time and yeah, you get about an hour and a bit of flight time. So yeah, it's a great use. I'd definitely recommend getting more batteries for your drone. The last little piece of kit that I carry with me for the drone is this. These are ND filters from PGY Tech. Uh, there's quite a few other brands that sell them like Polar Pro and I think DJI make their own but these are just the ones that I picked up on the way to Hawaii. Inside the case you've just got these four little filters for the drone. What an ND filter does if you don't know is it acts as sort of sunglasses for your camera lens. So this means that it naturally darkens the image. That then means you can lower the shutter speed on the drone itself which means you can get that more cinematic blurry natural motion blur which you would not get if you were to raise the shutter speed in order to darken the image. Usually I'm not too keen on filters with my normal camera but for the drone it makes a huge difference. I always get asked about this particularly by security guards. Um, it's a gimbal, it's not a tripod as a lot of people think it is. Basically this is my June Crane so I'll just show you real quick. Basically, all you do is you get your camera, uh, you get this, screw your camera into place with the little base mount at the bottom. So once you have it in place, all you do is hold the power button and it will turn on. So that now you can see the motions are a lot smoother. All this is doing is it's compensating for the natural motion in your hand. There's gonna be a little bit of shake when you're holding it, right? All these do is there's motors in each of these axes uh, which compensate for any small motions you make with your hands. Uh, so it helps smooth out the footage and it looks really nice. All right, GoPros. I have the Hero 5 Black and the Hero 4 Black. For me, the Hero 4 is still my favorite. I think the Hero 5 is amazing and it does shoot better quality. They're supposed to be waterproof without a case, but my first one broke when I used it in a swimming pool for about five minutes. This has actual housing, so I'm a bit more confident in it. All right, so that is the bulk of things. There's a lot of controversy in the photography community about um, you know, how important is gear, what camera did you use, and how relevant it actually is. My opinion is that gear is important to an extent. If you have an entry-level camera and you really know how to use it, you're going to end up taking better photos than someone who is using a super expensive camera who doesn't know how to use it. But at the same time, if you're super familiar with both cameras, you can obviously take much better photos or videos on the higher end camera than you could on the entry one. All right, that's it for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed and got some value out of it. I hope it's answered some questions, which I know people have had for a while now. If you have any follow-up questions, please do feel free to ask them in the description below, uh, and I'll make sure to get around to answering all of those. Uh, if you have any other ideas for videos, please do comment them or get in touch on Instagram. That's actually where I did the poll, which indicated that you guys wanted this video. So I would love to hear more ideas from you and what you want to see on this channel. So yeah, that's it from me. If you like the video, please do like, comment, share, all that good stuff. Uh, stay safe, wear a mask, and I'll see you next time.